Hey everyone, my name is Ryan H. Lewis, and today I want to try and answer the question, did NPM just kill Yarn? NPM 5 just came out a few days ago, and it kind of is overtaking Yarn in all the ways that Yarn seemed to beat NPM. If you've never heard of Yarn, let me just take a little interlude and fill you in. Yarn's pretty new, so you may not have heard of it or used it yet. Basically, Yarn is a package manager just like NPM for the CLI, and it boasts faster installs than NPM. It has offline support if you've already installed a module, and it uses a lock file so that every install that you do will be the same as the last. It uses these hashes to verify the integrity of the package that you're downloading. So you can ensure that your dependencies will be the same as your team members. Yarn is supported by some really big names in the industry like Facebook and the minds behind Babel and Ember and the Rust package manager as well. But let's get back to NPM. Like I said, a few days ago, NPM released version five. And if you wanna go ahead and install it while we're talking about it, it's npm install g npm at 5.0.0 and this is going to install the new version of npm globally so you'll be using it everywhere i can go ahead and say it is totally worth it you should definitely install it now i haven't found any bugs and it seems to work marvelously so what are some of the new things that come in this new version 5 well first of all faster installs i did some non-scientific testing and it seems to be about three times faster than NPM4. It also brings with it offline support. So if you've installed a package before, you can install that same package even if you're not connected to the internet, which is pretty cool. It also uses a new type of lock file to get these deterministic installs. So previously NPM relied on NPM shrink wrap. Now there's a new package lock JSON file, and essentially it's gonna be generated automatically and it will use that lock file to verify the integrity of all the packages you're installing. So you can make sure that your install is the same as the last person who used that NPM install. And finally, this is a nice little UX thing that I, I actually really enjoy. When you install an NPM package, you don't have to use the dash dash save flag anymore. It's going to save that module to your package JSON in the dependencies hash by default, which is really nice. It's going to save me a lot of typing now. So those bullet points might have looked a little familiar because it seemed like these were a lot of the major points that differentiated Yarn as a package manager CLI. And that's kind of the point. NPM 5 has essentially covered all of those major bullet points that made Yarn so special. So now NPM and Yarn, well, I don't know if I would say there's many differences between them anymore from the perspective of a user. You can see here I'm doing first installs and then subsequent installs and the numbers are really, really close. I mean, I wouldn't really say that NPM or Yarn is faster. They seem close enough to each other that for me, speed wouldn't be a differentiator anymore. Originally, that was one of the main reasons I started playing around with Yarn because the installs were so much faster than NPM 4. So with some more non-scientific testing, I put together some numbers. I installed a fairly large project's dependencies, which was the serverless project. It had about 600 modules, and I did about five samples of each. So by no means scientific, but I did try to get some solid, consistent numbers. And keep in mind, these numbers are with my computer and my internet connection. Your numbers will likely be very different. Treat these more as relative against each other than specific hard numbers. NPM4 is about 45 seconds to do this first install, but both Yarn and NPM5 are around 25 seconds. So you can see that's almost a 50% decrease in time taken for a first install. Any subsequent install is where the cache comes into play and Yarn really is supposed to shine. And you can see comparing NPM4 to Yarn, it's a no brainer at that point. NPM4 is more than double the time taken to do a subsequent install than Yarn. But with NPM 5, it's three seconds off, but man, that's awfully close. And I would say for me, those three seconds aren't gonna really break any sort of build that I have to do. It may be different for your project, but 
for me, these numbers are looking really, really close. And so I really wonder, with NBM5 gaining parity with Yarn, are these shots fired? I mean, is NBM5 basically saying, anything you can do, we can do better? Well, one thing I did notice was that NPM5 actually had a much more consistent performance than Yarn. Like when I was doing the installs with Yarn and NPM4, the numbers that were coming in were kind of all over the place. For the graph you saw, I averaged them out, but really there was a large discrepancy between each time. With NPM5, that was within one second, which is really amazing. Every install was the same time. So I started to ask myself, did NPM just kill Yarn? I mean, with, with NPM 5 pretty much having parity with Yarn and also just coming installed with Node itself, is there really any reason to use Yarn anymore? And that made me get a little bit philosophical. I started to think about other projects that had similar types of rivalries and really what came out of them. Like for instance, Node.js and IO.js. And this is a, a little bit more of a different scenario, but when they split, that type of competition or rivalry really forced Node to get better. And Node was really stagnant and was not improving. That's why the IOJS fork happened. And that really gave Node the kick in the butt it needed. And then IOJS came back into Node. And we are where we are today, which is hopefully very happy. But that kind of competition really spurred Node to improve itself. And then in the JavaScript front-end frameworks, we see that Ember, React, and Angular, and Vue, and there's all other ones in there, they continuously steal and influence and compete with each other. And each framework gets better and better because of this competition between them. Every year, you'll see some keynote at a JavaScript conference where someone's doing some performance analysis of all the frameworks, and one will come in dead last. And what'll happen is, by the time the next year rolls around, that framework will actually be in first because they'll have seen that they had some improvements to make and they'll take a look at the other frameworks to see what they're doing and then try to improve their own framework. Everyone wins in the end because each framework gets better and better every year. So I really see the future of NPM and Yarn as having that same type of competition. I don't see Yarn going anywhere. It's got a ton of community support already and it's doing some interesting things. But I feel that Yarn and NPM are going to continue to compete with each other, but also make each other better by showing different ways to do things and innovating. And again, in the end, everyone wins because we've got better and better package managers, no matter if you use NPM or Yarn. So go grab the new NPM if you haven't, or grab Yarn if you haven't checked that out. They're both worth using, and sometimes it's fun to just have both on your computer and use whichever one you're feeling at that moment. Have you already tried NPM 5 or done some comparisons between it and Yarn and had some different findings? Are you excited about NPM 5 or have some other features that you thought were cool that I didn't mention? I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. And if you learned something new about package managers, I'd appreciate a like on this video and subscribe to my channel for more videos on JavaScript technologies, the web, AWS, React, all those sorts of things. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.